To nobody's surprise, Fox News has once again decided to attack Democrats for big government, socialism, participating in society. That's right. So if they claim that they care about climate change, but yet they participate in society by traveling, by flying in planes and private jets, well, they must be inherently hypocritical. Now, I've covered this argument before. They've made this argument time and again, but they've somehow managed to make the argument sound even dumber than the last time when they made the same exact argument. Take a look. Flying high, 2020 Democrat candidates taking to the campaign trail to push their plans for climate change, while at the same time spending big on private jets in order to do it. Spending on private flights by Democrat presidential candidates soared over the past three months from roughly $680,000 in the second quarter to more than $2.2 million in the third fundraising period. According to the FEC, Joe Biden spent the most on private flights, $924,000, with Bernie Sanders at $360,000 and Liz Warren, $132,000. They've got to get from place to place, but should they get a pass on this one? What do you think, Gary? They absolutely should not. Look, David, maybe I'm being cynical or maybe it's my old age or older age, but each of these candidates are total hypocrites. Look, if you sat them down over a beer or a wine or whatever, I guarantee you they don't care about climate change. What they do care is about is getting elected and Climate change is a buzzy issue right now. I think we all can agree on that. But if you sat down also over that same beer or wine and asked them, well, what causes climate change? What specifically can we do? They don't have an answer. You know why? Scientists don't have an answer out there. So they raise this buzzy issue. They fly around. They act as hypocrites to get votes because that's the thing to do. They don't have a solution, though, other than, you know, we're all going to, you know, eliminate cows and cars and stuff like that. It's all silly. It's all nonsense. But, you know, this is the age we live in where that's what you have to do to get elected. Gary, my friend, uh, first of all, of course they're hypocrites. Second of all, I don't think there's anything funny Thank about you. the comment you made. Scientists do know what causes climate change. But, David, no, they I don't. have the solution. Oh, Adam, they do not. Come I on. I have the solution. We need to pass a law the way other countries have to dramatically shorten the campaign season. That will mean less money. <laughs> nah, now you're flights, on to something. Good luck. And the republic will be in better shape as a result. Good luck. The, uh, we are in agreement. I thought he was Amtrak, Joe. They should, they should call him Gulfstream <laughs> Joe, Joe if he keeps it up. With he's the, got the biggest plane, right? I wonder if he's going to buy that new G700 that just came out. That is a snazzy politician's vehicle. Uh, um, okay. Yeah, we all joke about it. Al Gore obviously used to spend. That was a lot of. He started this whole thing with the, right. with, the with his documentary. His house was much bigger than most Americans' house. Used a tremendous he energy. Jets. Look, at the end of the day, it's the voters would have to pay for for energy. You got to stop the masses from consuming energy, and that's why when they think that they can target energy companies or rich people, that the energy companies just deliver energy to people that want to consume it. Ultimately, the price would have to go radically up to everybody, their voters, not just the rich with their jets or the Rolls Royce. That's a very small percentage, as we know from the inequality graphs of the world. The average person the vo and the politicians for the green agenda don't want to face the reality that it's not the energy companies, it's the consumer and they would have to pay a lot more and live in a much smaller house than they want to, yeah. and a lot smaller than Al Gore's house. And without debating the impacts or effects of climate change and what causes them, I just think it's a bad look. Like, do as I say, not as I do. If you're going to talk a Green Deal, <laughs> then live green. So it's just, of course, to me, it seems like hypocrisy, but in politics, what is it? Well, it's not only politics, Adam. Mm -hmm. you, you got all those folks down in the south part of your state in, in Malibu and everything living right on the beach. And those properties are going like wildfire, I'm told by real estate agents. So, you know, they're apparently not worried about global warming. Is that warming. a joke about the fires? or was <laughs> No, well, I mean, no, no joke. It's the, the truth. No, I mean, you know, the average age of these people is is probably they, they probably have fewer years ahead of them than they do behind them. So you're you're criticizing oh, them for geez. using their their vast wealth to buy homes. To I'm enjoy criticizing for the next them 10 or 15 for years. for not doing as they say and as they do. I mean, they're they're just hypocrites. They're total hypocrites. Well, look, I mean, on this. do they honestly believe that they're convincing anyone with this argument? I just feel like if you're going to argue against Democrats, and you really want to make this a climate change based argument, then you appeal to your audience by citing some stupid shit about the deficit and fear mongering about the debt and how much the Green New Deal would cost. But with this, I mean, it just seems overly hacky. 
right? Because we can say the same thing about Republicans and how hypocritical they are. Like Rand Paul denounces single-payer Medicare for all, yet he flew to Canada to have a surgery. Donald Trump is against immigration, but yet his wife is an immigrant. I mean, we can go on all day. So the hypocritical argument isn't the best thing to trot out if you're a Republican, because they are the embodiment of hypocrisy. But nonetheless, they made the argument, so let's address it. Uh, quote, if you sit them down over a beer or wine, I guarantee that they don't care about climate change. What they do care about is getting elected. Now, this is true about pretty much 99.9% .9 of politicians. And I'll grant you that maybe this is the case for Joe Biden. I don't think he cares at all about climate change. Um, he, he just doesn't, right? He just wants to get elected. He wants power. But when it comes to Bernie Sanders and even Elizabeth Warren, they care about climate change. I genuinely believe that they actually do want to fix the planet. They want to make sure that our planet is habitable for future generations. I mean, if you go back and look at Bernie Sanders' record, he was talking about climate change in the 1980s when nobody else was talking about it. He was educating children in classrooms about climate change. There was nothing to be won politically for him back then. He wasn't going to run for president back then. If he had ambitions for higher office, don't you think he would have ran for office you know, in the 1990s. I mean, it, they care, right? They genuinely care. Now, I get that you see politicians normally as detached, but on the left, we actually have some politicians who care about the issues. AOC, Ilhan Omar, Rashida Tlaib, Bernie Sanders, Pramila Jayapal, Ro Khanna. These are people who actually care about the issues. Now, if you're a cynical individual who knows about American politics, I get it, right? Everyone's corrupt. Nobody cares about policy. But there are people on the left who do care about policy. We know Bernie Sanders means what he says, and Americans don't agree with you, hence why they view him as not only the most popular politician, but the most trustworthy, according to some polls. Now, he also says, if you sat them down and asked them what causes climate change and what we can do, they don't have an answer. Want to know why? Because scientists don't have an answer. I mean, I just don't know what to say to this. It's such a simple, idiotic argument that I really don't even know how to respond because it's almost self-defeating. Of course, scientists know what's causing climate change. We call it anthropogenic climate change, and the cause is literally in the name. People. Specifically, we know who causes it. 100 multinational corporations are responsible for 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So not only do we know the cause, we know the source. And scientists know this. So for you to just say, oh, well, these are just ignorant people. They're just talking about climate change because it's politically expedient. You're wrong. And you're a liar. And he then says, you know, we don't have solutions other than to eliminate cars and cows. What a lazy, hacky argument. These presidential candidates are not saying that. Um, Bernie Sanders, if you look at his Green New Deal, where does it say that he wants to eliminate cows? In fact, let's extend that. To Joe Biden, even. Where does Joe Biden say he wants to eliminate cars and cows? Is there any Democrat in office who says we should eliminate cars and cows? Now, he's going to point to the fact sheet that was trying to be, you know, uh, funny that AOC's office released. But what did Republicans do? They took that literally. Now, what AOC's office said was, since we can't eliminate farting cows and airplanes, we have to do... These things cut emissions in other areas to get to net zero. So even in the joke that they put out, they weren't even saying we should eliminate cows. But what did they take away from that? They want to eliminate hamburgers. They want to get rid of cows. They want to ban airplanes. All they have are lies. They have to be disingenuous because they know that we have the winning argument. They know that the Green New Deal polls very well. So that's why the only way that they argue against us is by lying and strawmanning us. Now, another panelist fear-mongered about how climate change mitigation would ultimately affect consumers because if you crack down on large multinational corporations with additional taxes and regulations, then they're just going to pass that cost off onto consumers. And he clearly hasn't been listening to any of the solutions that are being proposed because what is the Green New Deal doing? It is trying to make us a global leader in green, clean, renewable technology. That means we invest in wind, solar, hydro. We stop these subsidies to fossil fuel companies. 
And rather than just allowing China to become a global leader, we become the global leader in green technology, which is the future, like it or not. But then one panelist chimed in and said, if you're going to talk Green New Deal, then live green. This is such a convenient argument to make because they say it and they don't expect us to push back. And I get that, right? Because this is kind of difficult to push back against because it just, it makes sense, right? Oh, of course, if you're going to talk the talk, then of course you should walk the walk. I get that. The problem with this argument is that it's overly simplistic. It's a gross oversimplification because what's the thing about capitalism? There is no ethical consumption under capitalism. And even if all of us as human beings, we all cut our carbon footprint to zero. And I'm not talking net zero. I'm talking zero. We stop emitting greenhouse gas emissions. We're not going to solve this climate crisis because again, 100 corporations are responsible for 70% of global greenhouse gas emissions. So this is an issue that cannot be solved at the individual level. This requires governance. This is a wicked problem that governments have to solve because it requires power and authority. Human beings have no control over taxation and regulation, hence why we need governments to take action, hence why we are directing our pressure at governments worldwide, because they're the ones who can save the planet. But I mean, this is Fox News. It's almost it, like it feels counterproductive to even try to respond to their criticisms as if I'm going to persuade them, because Fox News viewers, they've already drunk in the Kool-Aid, so they're just going to hear this and it's going to be music to their ears. They're preaching to the choir. But this disinformation, it really is problematic because we have 11 years left to act and there's zero sense of urgency from mainstream media. Fox News is still not even really accepting the reality of anthropogenic climate change. And it's just, it's frustrating at this point. These people are a threat to the planet. Because if you are not with us, you're against us. Because we need all hands on deck. And for you to still be at this area where you are denying climate change, I mean, what are you doing? We are witnessing a mass extinction event oceans are heating up coral reefs are dying the ice caps are melting wildfires are ravaging california hurricanes are getting more common and they're becoming more intense and you're still plugging your ears and closing your eyes and pretending like there's no problem i mean at what point do they ever admit that they're wrong I don't think they ever will because these people are not normal. They're psychopaths and they're liars and they care more about the industries that they represent than, you know, actually saving the planet that we live on. Bad news for you. Without a planet that's habitable, none of the interests that you represent, that you shill for, are going to be able to exist. They all go out of business because no planet means no economy. No economy means no corporations can exist. Now, the problem with that argument is that they don't care because they're all old and it's going to be too late when they realize what's at stake. So all around, it's just sad. It's what we expect from Fox News, but it certainly is something that I still feel as if we need to call out whenever we see it because this is harmful. This is literally fake news and it's just, it's really, it's a threat. I'll put it that way. It's a threat to humanity.